Good morning, everyone. It is really a lovely, lovely morning here. The sun is brightly shining and the sky is blue. And yeah, we do have snow. But that's okay because it's one of those snows that we only got like a couple inches on the ground, but it just coated everything so beautifully. And so, yeah, Rick and I, we went out for a walk and the street was totally clear and it was just, it was glorious. That's what it was. It was absolutely glorious to see the beauty of all of that and everything just looks so clean. But anyways, as you can see behind me, I got, yeah, um, I got a shipment of dog food. I... There's only one place that I know that I can buy the brand that I like, which is from Dog Food. And uh, there is a place in Erie that sells it. There's a couple places, but it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a distance. And so us living in Waterford, I just, in, in the wintertime, I usually just order it because <laughs> it isn't any more money. But anyways, I am trying something new, and that is they, they, they have this, this treat, and it's called Crunchy O's, and they kind of look like Cheerios, a little bit bigger than Cheerios, but not much. And uh, yeah, so it's supposed to be banana flavored. It's banana and cinnamon, and I'm not really sure what else, but yeah, that's only have, it's only two calories per treat, which is good because... We just have to be really careful, especially with Mindy, with the amount of calories that she can consume in a day. So I can keep track of this a little bit more, and it's a little snack, so she can have a few more than, than not. Anyways, yeah, what can I say? That's what's going on here. There is a couple things that I need to do today that I am really putting off as I just... Do you have some chores at your house that you just do not like to do? Yeah, I have one. And it, it, well, I've got, I've got a couple, you know, I mean, I really do not like doing laundry, but you know what? I like clean clothes, so I do laundry, uh, but I need to clean out my refrigerator. I mean, I need to take everything out. I need to take the bins out. I need to wash them. I need to wash all the, the shelves inside. And, and, and it's just, it's so tedious to do that. And so, yeah, that's the chore I'm going to do today. At least I'm trying to psych myself up with some motivation to get that done. Yeah, it might take a little bit of prayer along with that. Anyways, that's what I plan on doing today. Um, otherwise, yeah, I have an appointment later on in this afternoon. But, yeah, it's going to be kind of one of those days that's kind of boring. Anyways, I hope that your day is not boring, and I hope that you have a chance, if weather permits, that you can get outside and you can take a walk, because it wasn't until I started having, you know, I had injury with my knees that um, you really kind of get to that point where you don't realize what you have until you lose it, and so just being able to go out and enjoy a walk, a simple walk, if you're able take advantage of it because you just never know. You know, I never thought I was going to have problems. I never expected that I would have an injury and here I am. So anyways, um, I think you're really going to like this devotion today. It is um, Psalm 16, the entire Psalm, because there's only 11 verses. So yeah, I think we'll go ahead and we'll move on and uh, I will show you a few of the glorious pictures from our walk. you if you can to get your Bible and to follow along. 
Now, this psalm was written by David, and it is a song on the hope and of the faithful and the Messiah's victory. And so I'm just going to go ahead and read the whole thing because there's just 11 verses. It starts out by saying, Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply apply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to shoal, or let, my, let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Now, David begun this, this psalm with a prayer. He is actually asking the Lord to preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge, or I put my trust. Immediately, we see the language of faith. David takes cover in God. He doesn't merely acknowledge that God exists, but he understands his entire existence in relation to God's supremacy. And he continues throughout this psalm to expand his declaration of trust and proclaims that the Lord is the authority in his life. The Lord is the one who gives him direction and purpose. Now I want you to notice his theme. He started out with a prayer and then a declaration. I have no good apart from you. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. I have set the Lord always before me. This psalm portrays the life of faith. And it's this picture that leads us to the fullness of joy that's spoken in verse 11. You make known to me the paths of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. This psalm speaks the words of a life that is trusting God. It shows us that it is the Lord who makes his heart glad. Indeed, his whole being rejoices. His flesh dwells secure. But why does his flesh dwell secure? Or as the King James Version puts it, my flesh will rest in hope. Because God will not abandon his soul to the grave. The Lord won't let his Holy One see corruption, which is to say either his death will forever be prevented or there will be a resurrection. It's important for us to see that the theme of the resurrection is throughout this entire psalm, and it is a clear reference to the Messiah. In fact, the apostles tell us explicitly that this verse is about Jesus, and you find that in Acts chapter 2, verses 19 to 36. Now, listen to what Peter proclaims in Acts 2, verse 31. He, speaking of David, foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, and he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. And this is really good news, for if this psalm, Psalm 16, is about Jesus, then that means it's about us too. For just as Christ was raised from the dead, so also will we 
be raised. For the Christian, we have more than the promise of a resurrection. We have an actual demonstration. We have the empty tomb. The theme of the resurrection helps us to understand what David meant in verse 11. You make known to me the path of life. You see, the path of life is not mainly about the here and now. The guiding grace of God is for more than this life. The path of life is only for a very few years in this world. Eternity is for, well, it's forever. There is a lot in the Bible about how to live our life in this world, but this passage is not talking about that. The path of life isn't about balancing our checkbooks or making wise decisions in our relationships or even blessing others, even though all these things are important. The path of life spoken here goes beyond the basics of faith. The path of life means being united to God in such a way that we'll never be without him. It's not so much a trail to follow as a promise to embrace. That's the glorious shift in Psalm 16. It begins with our faith in God and ends with God's faithfulness to us. He will not abandon us. No, he won't. He makes known to us the path of life, life beyond the grave, life that ushers us into his presence, where there is fullness of joy, where at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So we have much to rejoice. We dwell secure. Our whole being rejoices. We are glad. We can go forth today and tomorrow and the next knowing that not even death can separate us from God's love for us in Christ. We can fix our eyes upon the cross and run to our Savior, our Savior who is risen he has risen from the dead, who has trampled death by his own sacrificial death. We can rejoice because Jesus, by his strength, is raised from the dead. And we, by his grace, will be raised with him. So let us, as the church, arise and proclaim Christ is risen from the dead to a world that is in desperate need of a savior. God bless, and I will talk to you in the next video.